I'll make it short and quick. So, um, this was a 38 year old lady uh, with intractable pain, came to us uh, to diagnose at Cleveland Clinic and CR diagnosed with CRPS 2001. She got a stellar block in 2005, developed it in the uh, uh, upper arm and uh, thoracic area. And she came to us in July of this year. I don't have to say anything. You watch for yourself. Tony, can you bring the mic over? Oh, yes. Here you go. I have a very short time. Uh, um, they decided that you'll see the rest of the movie later. But what was the main problem was with her was that her temporal mandibular joints, I'm a general dentist, but my uh, passion is temporal mandibular joint disorders as it relates to movement disorders. And her temporal mandibular joint was so far out of place. On the right side, it was what they call anteriorly displaced. That means it was in front. And on the left side, it was laterally displaced. When you touch, when you have a compression of the uh, ligament that is holding the uh, disc in place, it compresses the nerve, uh, the auricular temporal nerve, which sends cascades down to the trigeminal, to the to the uh, reticular formation, and in the reticular formation, that's where that's what controls posture, plus the barometric receptors, plus the uh, vestibulo uh, sympathetic and the somatosympathetic. Um, we're going to have a couple of gentlemen. Hey, Jay, in the back, would you come up? Uh, I just met these guys. They came to see me this uh, today. So I haven't seen them until today. AJ and Zach are part of the Estonia support group here in New Mexico. And AJ is the leader. And if you could just say a few words about your conditions. All right. Oops. Come on over here. Come on. There you go, AJ. First of all, I want to thank you all for, show, for showing up and finding New Mexico, really. <laughs> but I have what they call benign essential blepharospasms. Don't ask me why they call it benign. I think it spreads. <laughs> but uh, uh, I never liked the word essential because I already know the word essential meaning something necessary. And you probably know that uh, this takes on a totally different meaning when it's designed for this. Blethro is a Greek word for eyelid. And what my eyes do primarily, particularly the right side, shuts tight. It can squeeze awfully tight, and I have no control over it. So let's go. What do we do for an experiment here? I, I have one little trick that I have. Even though I have a very difficult time trying to manage and open that eye voluntarily, it, I depend totally on my left eye, which is about 75% open most of the time. If I take my hand and just cup my eye that's effective and open, it pops open, and I can look at you. I cannot do that 
under normal circumstances. And uh, therefore, there's something in the shift of energy or what's going on with dystonia. It is a dystonic disorder, of course. Uh, I like to believe that, uh, uh, as Dr. Sibbs showed me some tricks just a matter of minutes ago, that uh, there's something else going on here, and maybe Dr. Sibbs will explain it best. But, okay, AJ's, AJ's condition is he has a complete upper denture, and what has happened is his lower teeth have been totally worn almost in half. So what, what is, uh, his upper denture is approximately uh, six to seven years old. What, what happens is, as over time, because of the wear of his teeth and because of the wear of the dentures, his, jo his, his upper and lower jaw have compressed one another, which means that the, uh, the condyle compresses the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve goes into the uh, subnucleus caudalis acting with seven. Once we remove the compression, his eyes open. And uh, what we did was we artificially, just with some tongue blades, opened his, his bite and his eye opened up. You can see this, see this afterward because we're running out of time. Well, what we did is take these so-called popsicle sticks and put them in my mouth to take a good bite on it. Uh, you're my hero. <laughs> Thank you, AJ. I hope it lasts. <laughs> and this is Zach. Go ahead and tell us yours. Hi, uh, my name is Zach. Um, my, my, I have a, a dystonia, a movement a P and uh, PKD dystonia is like proximal uh, kinesogenic dy dystonia. It's uh, it kind of comes in waves and goes. A lot of the time, when you look at me, I'll appear very neurological normal, and you wouldn't guess anything was wrong. I probably passed mo most neuro tests, but um, a lot of uh, there's different triggers for it, but um, ever since I've had, I've had it now for 12 years. It took about three years to diagnose after being told several times I was crazy. And uh, after the last 12 years, have been really hard. I haven't been able to drive. Um, walking's after a while, walking becomes a burden. And uh, I have a lot of dystonic tremor throughout my body. I'll, um, when the episodes are real bad, I'm pretty much bed bound for several days as a contortionist, excruciating pain. I, would never wish upon my worst enemy. And uh, I just, I heard about this online and came here hoping to learn some more about what Dr. Uh, Sims was doing. And I, I must say, I, I didn't believe it at first. I, I was very skeptical, but I wanted to learn more. And uh, he taught me a lot more. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, give, him the, give him the walk first. Oh. Just kind of, it's kind of an imbalance. Sometimes the muscles cramp up or over correct themselves, causing for falling. And being six five when I actually stand up straight, that's a long fall. But I got pretty good at it. And uh, um, the dystonic movements, I can kind of show you. This. And, and these are things I kind of do with every day. This, uh, this isn't like a full blown episode that I could have. I could have it right now, I could have it 10 minutes from now, I could have it a week from now, I could never talk it. But, um, I mean, a lot of the episodes right now are controlled by a lot of uh, medications like uh, Artane, things like Baclofen, Clonopin, things like that. Uh, I, it's why I'm standing today, but at the same time, my three year old, I think, could do math better than I can um, with a cocktail of medications like that. And uh, so that's my story. All right, let's try it out. Okay, great advice. There you go. Right, let's put these together. Okay, yeah, right. And push your jaw forward.
I'm sorry. It's been 12 years since I could do that. I just need to go to Costco and buy some popsicles. <laughs> there you go, guy. That's yours. You keep oh, that. Okay. I can't use them. That's true. <laughs> I can't use them. But anyway, thank you very much. Huh? That's okay. I don't. I don't care. I, I've. I've. I've got a higher power to answer to. <laughs> thank you. I ask you to consider what you just saw in the light of what we've been discussing. Uh, peripheral nerve injuries we know are the precipitants uh, often of CRPS. Uh, entrapped nerves are a known precipitant of dystonias. It's known if you de decompress these nerves that the dystonias can remit. It shouldn't be a surprise to us that a, a jaw joint, if it dislocates, might pr produce an entrapment of a nerve. It took a dentist, actually several dentists, to bring this to our attention. Dr. Sims has had the insight to follow the trigeminal nerve to where it terminates, and he's drawn our attention to the reticular formation. So I look forward to having you all discuss these uh, observations, your thoughts with Dr. Sims. 